Good afternoon, South Africa. Welcome to Afternoon Express. I'm Bonnie Booley. Hello, Dan. Hello. Hello. I'm so glad I could take a seat. I could stand up. It's Friday. I mean, my leisure clothes. I'm loving your whole sports lux look. Thank I you. know I was teasing you and I said you look like you're going to a hockey tournament, but it's actually been growing on me and I'm loving it. Oh, sure. Just before I want to take a <laughs> photograph that you guys see on Instagram, I asked her, should I be doing high jump or long jump today? I think it's pretty cool. I'm celebrating the World Cup at the moment. Obviously, Russia won yesterday. Big celebration. And so I thought like athleisure is the day. It's, no, no, it's good. It's good. You're working. Thank you. Thank now, uh, first off, we just want to wish all our Muslim viewers a blessed Eid. Indeed. We hope that you've had a wonderful day with your family and friends so far. Invite me to a dinner or something. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. The food is always my favorite part. I know. Yeah, now it's time to kick off the weekend on the show today because today we bring you two traditional music acts. We've got the ladies from the percussion group called Black Roots Marimba joining us for a live performance. Plus B BCUC from Soweto uh, who use their music to demystify the general world views around modern Africa. Join us in the loft as well for a live performance. Yeah, we also open a very interesting conversation with Ryan Ravens, the CEO of Accelerate Cape Town, about the state of representation of black professionals in the workplace in Cape Town. Indeed, it's going to be a fascinating conversation. Yeah. So I hope you guys are going to join that chat as well. Please add those thoughts to the conversation we're having on our social media sites. Have you ever experienced prejudice at work because of perhaps your skin color or your gender? You can tweet those thoughts to Afternoon Chat using the hashtag Afternoon Express, or you can comment on our Facebook page. Please just bearing in mind to look after each other's comments. It's not a, a competition or a fight with each other on the social Social platforms share your honest views because if we don't open up this conversation who will Absolutely. we're also today sitting down with an inspiring young woman called Sibulele Dawn Mlumbi who is the head intern for public relations at the United Nations Association of South Africa making her a very smart person with that yeah title. yeah Your so joining us up front, uh, Bantu Continua Uhuru Consciousness, or BCUC for short, is a band that makes what they describe as music for the people, by the people, with the people. Mm. Taking influences from indigenous sounds, they challenge the stereotypes of African narratives. <laughs> I care about who's on the mic and got what it takes to so keep it real. To keep it real. To keep it real. In Africa, I'm glad you've been the moment. My slow was baby TV by the new reality. See, baby, they don't need no book and some money. What's up, 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 what's our culture gets no continuity. Go for tell your crew they're messing up the identity. And they join us live in the Love BCUC right here on Afternoon Express. Quite an interesting music video there. Tell us about that. <laughs> yeah, you're laughing because his shirt was off and you're like, <laughs> dude. No. We didn't expect that to say an old video, but it's a nice video. It was short in so way too. So yeah. it's from home when it was our first official video. Okay. Have you done more setups Are or less setups since then? More. <laughs> are, you, are you feeling like it's not that one? It's right, it's showing yeah, that I'm one. Like, oh, another one. No. <laughs> it's a classic. Yeah. It's a yeah. classic. And we are yeah. proud of everything that we have done. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. So, like, for you to be whoever you are, mm. if you were somebody else yesterday, so like, we'll take our yesterdays with pride. <laughs> yes. 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 So, your music is quite unique. Mm. Um, and what are the main themes of your music that drive your narrative? Our music is more of a social commentary music, so it's driven by people we meet, uh, the conversations we have. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. We have quite an interesting worldview of South Africa and of Africa, and especially when it comes to places like Soweto, where they've tried to like you know change it up so many times to bring tourists in, to bring tourists out, mm. to localize it, to make it separate. Uh, what have been your views of Soweto and South Africa and that worldview, and how do you want to change it? South Africa is in a place where it's beautifully ugly. Mm. You know, like, uh, there's a lot of positives that are happening and there is a lot of not so positives that are happening. So with our music, we're trying to, to push the eye to the possibility mm. that we can become, mm. you know, and putting um, some word clubs in the negatives, <laughs> you know, because 
everybody is saying negative things about mm. South Africa and we traveling the world. So we're trying to push the, okay, so also it's possible, you know mm. what I'm saying? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what we do with our music, you know, yeah. and yeah. we are not politicizing, but nobody is safe. You yeah. know, like we talk about everyone, <laughs> but also we should remember we're talking about our parents, our grandparents. Yeah, yeah. So they should be respect in how we comment in their shortfalls, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And also we have to see also, because we can say corruption, but give me the position of president, <laughs> I might be corrupt right, too. Right, mm -hmm. yeah. You know, so like it's it's almost satirical. But it's not funny. Yeah. 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 No. yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're the only queen in the group. Yes, queen. Yes. yes. <laughs> and <laughs> what's it like? <laughs> uh, for me, it's normal because this, this this is family that I've chosen. These are people that I've connected mm. with. And yeah. so for me, it's like it's normal and I, I hold my own. So I yeah. don't feel like I'm, I'm becoming smaller. I'm actually... Yeah. Ever since I've met the band and it was like about seven guys, yeah. I feel... Like I've actually improved my confidence, yeah. my esteem is actually yeah. higher than. Are there you know? times when they just make like locker room jokes and you're like, I'm actually, I'm just not here for this today. Yeah, sometimes and sometimes I'm part of that. Like I, I'll insert <laughs> myself, you know, go at it. And sometimes, you know, I can give them a dose of my version of yes. locker room and they're like, oh, that's too much. And I'm like, well, yeah, well yeah. it's sort of about too much. It's so it's... interesting to see when groups come together because everyone has such different personalities. Yeah. And they're trying to find like yeah. a common ground. Because yeah. you guys are a much bigger group and have whittled yourselves down to these yeah. seven core members. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, yes. So tell us about how you found each other and what was it about this connection that made it so successful? Uh, well, initially it started with uh, Jovi meeting up with chicks who's who like our Konga guy, yeah. and they met up, had a connection, like just got along. Musically, we're speaking the same language, and we're actually rehearsing. Like one was re rehearsing individually, yeah. but actually kind of connected. And then chicks just uh, uh, like met Jovi met uh, chicks' friends. Mm. And oh, they're kind of nice people and um, mm. amazing poets and amazing fashion. And so it was, it was the creative space was ready was for that. And to, and to be truthful, at first, it started as a pose, mm. yes. you know, because, <laughs> because like we wanted to name Bantu Continua or Wrong Consciousness mm, yeah. because it was a tribe called Quest, yes. mystical <laughs> revelation <laughs> of Rastafari. Yeah. So we wanted an <laughs> ill name, you know, yeah. and that ill name gave birth to this enigma and then now we have to live up to the name yeah. mm. so mm. you grow up now mm. you have to live up to this name you have to be responsible yeah. we're not singing about ladies anymore yes. you know yes. God. Yes. man yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. and at first our lyrics were Nothing. yeah Good. you know yeah. well they're questionable girls money they were extremely <laughs> questionable <laughs> No, like I remember, like I remember she walked like, off stage one day. I was like, nah, I'm not going to do this. I'm leaving. So, but over time, I mean, <laughs> they had to get to know me and yeah, understand yeah. Uh, like, you know, how, I w how other females would perceive their lyrics yeah. and be like, before I let you guys yeah. go, I'm dying to know about the role of African instrumentalism in groups like this. Obviously, you guys are using a lot of African instruments in, yeah. your, in your production. Yeah. What role does that play in modern South African music? It started with African instruments because we couldn't afford decent instruments. Nice. Mm -hmm. Until people kind of dug that and thought that it was something Unique. that we yeah. chose, mm. but it was budget that chose. Wow. <laughs> yes. That's and then, honest. And yes. I like that. That's very right. yeah. 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 And it stuck and you kept it and you've embraced and if it. And yeah. the roots of yeah. our yeah. music. And, yeah. I know and you're traveling it. all over the world. How are people yeah. receiving you? <laughs> well, the, the reception is quite positive because yeah. especially thinking we're, like, we're speaking, English is not like, you know, a, a, a main language in most countries. Yeah. So, I think people are connecting to our intention because I think uh, our music is very intent. Like we have a, a clear mission of what we want to do. Just because you don't uh, hear the lyrics, it doesn't mean you don't yeah. hear my heart. You know mm, what I mean? I see. Right. So, yeah. so I think we're the, expressive and naked at heart. You know, yeah. so like we make sure that we don't mince words yeah. Yeah. and choose a place that we're hitting and hit it until it comes with oil. Mm. Yeah. Wow. wow. <laughs> She's a wordsmith. This guy. <laughs> I asked him offset because I asked him if he's a lyricist because he makes comments offset half the time. Yeah. They're very funny. He's a very funny guy. Yeah. Yeah. He's a funny guy. He's a funny guy. He's a funny guy. He's a lyricist for the group. Yeah, yeah. And, and also what's more important about Homozo's role. Uh -huh. Homozo is the only lady in the group 
but she is our leader. Yeah. Wow. And we come from households that are led by the matriarchs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? yes. So yes. for us, it's easy to gravitate towards the mother than yes. these fathers who end up fighting. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Brownie points for you, dude. Yeah. Points. That's really yeah, amazing, yeah, guys. Good That's time. really amazing. We cannot wait for the performance later. It's a Friday. Yeah. 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 And, yes. we're, and we're going to make it a little bit mellow for you because and we short. don't want to scare you. Yeah. We yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to get us in the groove nice and easy. Yeah. Nice I tell you. And we're going to make sure there sons are you are as pretty as I thought you were. <laughs> no, I'm saying. Thank you. Thank okay. you so much. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> My brother. Oh. I think you can walk off set yeah. now. I like it. I like it. I like it a lot. Okay. VCUC will be treating us to a live performance <laughs> at the end of the show. So make sure you stay tuned. After the break, we sit down with CEO of Accelerate Cape Town, Ryan Ravens, to look at a current, the current statistics of diversity in the South African workforce, specifically with young professionals. Indeed. We want you to add your voice to this conversation because it's such an important one that I'm pretty sure is affecting you as we speak. You can visit our social platforms by answering the question, have you ever experienced prejudice at the work, at your workplace because of your skin color or perhaps your gender? You can tweet those answers to at Afternoon Chat, that's our handle, and use the hashtag Afternoon Express so we can find it. Or there is a post on our Facebook page that you can comment on. So send those comments now. Okay, guys. Uh, mine is on one. Yes, the guitar is on one. I still need to Should we play? Yeah.
Well, welcome back to Afternoon Express. We're live on this Friday afternoon right here on SABC3. It's good to have you with us and I hope that you're joining our conversation on social media because it's going to be fascinating. According to Department of Labor, did you know that the percentage of black professionals in Cape Town has increased by only 4% over the past decade? Yeah, that's quite low. And the mm. question we're asking today is where are young black professionals? Are they being denied opportunities in Cape Town or are they just choosing to find work elsewhere? And joining the conversation is Ryan Ravens, the CEO of Accelerate Cape Town, a company that aims to advance sustainable growth in the mother city. Yeah, I'm not Welcome a stranger Ryan. to the loft. Good to have you. Hi, thanks for having me. Yeah, so Ryan, in light of the recent article that went viral by Tini Congwenya about her reasons for leaving Cape Town and moving back to Joburg, in which she cites um, issues of feeling alienated and feeling like she there's a ceiling, she can only go so far, and just feeling like she looks at the social uh, landscape and she's not represented and she wants to be in a place where she sees young black professionals succeeding and, and, and she wants to be inspired in the environment. So in light of that mm -hmm. article, what are the things that we need to speak about openly and honestly? Yeah, look, it's, a, it's an uncomfortable conversation and it's a highly emotive issue. So you, you've, you've got to be cautious when dealing with it. Um, and, you know, I was really pleased to see Tinyika's article. I was, it, it's heartbreaking to a certain extent because a lot of what she raises is incredibly valid and very true and, and does reflect the mm. experience of, of young black professionals in this region. Mm. Um, but, but it's a complex and multifaceted issue. Mm. You know, there, there are a number of reasons why black professionals are not comfortable in Cape Town. And often it's not only because of race. Um, you know, so for example, Tinyuko spoke uh, quite a bit about language mm. and, and the fact that she, as a Tsonga speaker, she, there was no one that she could speak to and she didn't hear her language spoken yeah. yet. And, and you can appreciate how that would cause a sense of alienation. Yeah. But if you look at the statistics, the, the reality is in the Western Cape, the, the, the makeup of people and the demographic uh, uh, setup and, and the language is spoken differ to the rest of the mm. country. And it's not by design, but really a reflection of historical migratory yeah. patterns. Yeah. So I looked at the stats. I, I just and, want to jump yeah. in on that for a second, though, because what then is a young black professional? Do we consider colored people who make up the majority of population in the Western Cape as black professionals? That's the challenging thing. So um, you see a lot of companies when they have transformation targets, those targets are based on the national demographic, right? Which has it as 80% black African and 9% colored. But if you look at the Western Cape demographic, mm. you've got a 50% colored population. Sure. And a 27% black, black population. population. Mm. And yeah. so to expect that you can match similar numbers is quite unrealistic. Yeah. And so what happens, unfortunately, is with, with the best of intentions, companies are having to import black talent, black African talent, but we're finding the unfortunate consequence where colored graduates are largely unemployed. Mm. Um, already. So all, there's yeah. already an, an employment deficit and, and we're wanting to... Um, um, Undo that. Yeah. Now. But what about the fact that even as it is, and I was about to say, it's not just that black graduates aren't getting work and there's no opportunities. Why is transformation not working in Cape Town to an extent that we're seeing coloured professionals rising up to the ranks that they want to? Yeah. Look, the, the unfortunate reality is that youth unemployment is a global problem. So the, the latest estimate was something like 71 million youth globally that are yeah. unemployed. Um, in South Africa, we have um, something like 51% of our youth unemployed. Mm -hmm. Now, that if, if, if it wasn't for a demographic, that could be managed. But the, the real problem in South Africa is that s almost 70% of our population is less than 35 years of age. Yeah. And so then when you consider that half of them are completely excluded from the economy, mm. um, both with respect to seeking opportunities, they're not in training, they're not in education, and they're not employed. Mm. Yeah. So I think young black professionals also want somebody to, well, we all want somebody to point fingers at who, who is the problem in this scenario. Is it the education system? Is it the universities not training them for the jobs? Is it the business? is not employing the right kind of black professionals or is it just a general industry like i don't understand who to point fingers at oh our company is just filling in scorecards just checking yeah. a scorecard yeah. and it's actually not heartfelt and it's not a transformation Transformative, yeah. it's not a culture in the company it's just because it's incentivized it's like well let's just check the boxes it's, it's a little of all of the above so the the reality is that um, transformation and BE scorecards have become a compliance and scorekeeping exercise, right? So it's all about scoring your points. And I think we've, we've, we need to move back to the original intention of the legislation, which is genuine transformation. And a lot of companies approach transformation from the perspective of, um, the, the, the analogy I liked was from the head. Mm. So it's compliance and you ticking a box versus from the heart. 
where it's a genuine commitment to transforming society yeah. and yeah. transforming the company. And I think if, if we can start moving towards the intention of the legislation and people can start understanding why transformation is important mm. as opposed to sort of just doing it because you've got to score yeah. points. And you get more revenue. I mean, you can get better tenders. You can do all that sort of stuff with the right check boxes. D don't say tenders, man. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are we, is it's not about thing? tenders. Are tenders still a thing? <laughs> no, but, and, but and, it's, it's, it's about diversity in yeah. the business, you know. Yeah. Um, I think diversity adds enormous value. Yeah. Yeah. Um, not just from a racial perspective, but just diversity, diversity yeah. of thought, diversity of approaches mm. to problem solving and so on. Yeah. And, and okay. so it's valuable and it's important. What about millennials? There's, there's also another story coming up where millennials are not job ready um, or they expect microwave results. Yeah. Um, look, this, this, is a, this is a difficult one. So um, we, we are seeing, firstly, with respect to work readiness, um, what we're finding is a lot of graduates coming out of university mm. are simply not ready for the workplace. Mm. And, and often it's because many of our black graduates are, are first-generation mm. university graduates, and they haven't been raised in a household that was headed by sort of yeah. white-collar workers who could groom them, mm. be an example, and so on. I see. Um, and universities are not providing that skill. Uh, yeah. You know, how, how to manage yourself, how yeah. to conduct yourself, not instilling a sense of self-esteem yeah. and, and so on, and I confidence. Mm. And that comes through at an interview stage or, or in your early stage mm. of your I career. See. With respect to millennials, what we're finding is that they are often unrealistic expectations mm. in terms of how quickly you can progress mm. through a business, right? So I think mm. the hardest stories of, of millennials being there for two years and then feeling yeah. they're ready to be the CEO yeah. um, <laughs> is, is very much in effect. Yeah. And so, so sometimes you also have to moderate the expectation yeah, of see. this generation that actually it's a slog. I got right? you. The, the, right, I must interrupt you there, but um, there's been a very fascinating conversation. There's lots to talk about. So I hope you guys are continuing the chat on our social sites at Afternoon Chat using the hashtag Afternoon Express. Ryan, thank you. Absolute pleasure. Thank you. Clover fresh milk is way better. Made with love by Clover. Now, nothing beats the taste and quality of Clover Fresh Milk. It is the freshest milk out there. And speaking of fresh, in lieu of Youth Day coming up on Saturday, we've been highlighting some of the, the freshest talents that we've spotted right off our local streets. And in our loft today, we are joined by the Black Roots Marimba Band, who are here to share with us a bit about their story. It's good to have you guys with us. Hello. <laughs> so tell me more about how you guys got together. Um, yes, um, I started the band in 2012 mm -hmm. um, in Kuguletu um, because at the time there weren't uh, many programs that were around um, mm -hmm. and there weren't many bands for us to join, mm -hmm. um, especially women bands. So um, then um, I saw that there was um, a need for the youth to mm -hmm. actually get um, involved in something. So then we started Black Roots and um, uh, that time there was like, 30 of us sure. yeah it is insane yeah. and um and then people stopped and people yeah. just and yeah and then now there's um five of us five together. official members yes and then what we do is um we teach um we teach junior band and uh, he's a part of our junior band nice. yes <laughs> so we teach um young ones as well in mm. google Ed to um how to play and how mm. to get into music i found that. through all my interviews and afternoon express that the only way to get youth to really believe in themselves is to give them something that they're passionate about and i think you guys do that with your music i remember the one instrument that i picked up in my sort of grade 10 year at high school was the marimba and don't ask me to play now because uh, it's just uh, <laughs> my skills are a bit rusty at the moment. Uh, but I used to love, love, love performing marimba. It's got such a, it's, it uses your body, it uses your mind, it uses your ears to listen to everybody else as well. Yeah. It's a beautiful instrument and we just wanted to salute you and offer you the stage on Afternoon Express. <laughs> Thank you. Right, happy Youth Day to all of you guys. Thank you. Enjoy the performance. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. 
your weekend there's just something so incredible about the marimba and it doesn't matter where you come from or how old you are it always gets you moving it's really really beautiful black roots right here on afternoon express we've still got another performance coming up on the show today by bcuc so stay tuned for that it's going to be amazing i'm expecting twitter to go uh crazy with that hashtag afternoon express coming up after the break however we sit down with an inspiring young woman by the name of sibulele dawn Mlumbi, who is the head intern at the united nations association of south africa get ready to be inspired Clover fresh milk is way better. Made with love by Clover.
Welcome back to Afternoon Express live on SABC3. It's really heating up in the loft. Great guests, great music. We're just absolutely loving Indeed. it ahead of June 16. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I hope that you guys are sitting through lots of tweets. Hashtag Afternoon Express because obviously tomorrow is <laughs> Youth Day and South Africa is celebrating. We're joined now by a young woman who is an inspiration to all South African youth. 20-year-old mm-hmm. Sibulele <laughs> Dawn Mlumbi is the head intern for public relations at United Nations Association of South Africa. She's also a public speaker and sits on the board of directors of an international women's organization based in New Jersey called Glitter Girl Co. Mm. Yes. Welcome. <laughs> Lovely to have you with Thank us. Thank you for having me. Wow. So I was I was so moved by your award-winning speech. Mm-hmm. And in your words, just in like give us a framework of what self-love is and how it can contribute mm. to someone's long-term success and development. For me and in my experience as a young woman who has been on the journey of self-love, I think I can say that self-love has propelled me into embracing my truth, embracing my truth as a young woman, embracing my truth as a young woman who has been gifted with the purpose, mm. you know, and living my truth. Mm. That is what mm. self-love is for me. Yeah. A lot of young women in South Africa feel like because of their upbringings or the way that they grew up, uh, mm-hmm. they don't deserve to achieve success or don't yeah. deserve kind of glory and, you know, these kind of opportunities that you've been in. Your background was something quite similar, I yes, guess. Yeah. Yes. T- tell us about your background. Uh, I grew up, I was born in Langa, actually. I am mothered by Nomza Mamlumbi. I also grew up around my my brother, who's my biggest cheerleader, Ososo. Mm-hmm. Oh, and then I moved to Ekuguletu in 2000. My mother got a house in Cox. And I, I think I, I grew up around structural inequalities. Mm. You know, I, I, I witnessed what it means to, to go without nothing. I, I witnessed the depths of poverty, you know, and that propelled me into fulfilling my purpose. That propelled me into understanding and living the truth that I am great. I am bigger than what my physical circumstances can mm. depict. Mm. Um, the spiritual capacity that, that, I, that I possess is what is greater than what I see that what I'm surrounded by, yeah. you know? And so I think for me that, that was, that was, that was it. That was it. That was your life. And also moment. just growing up around my mother, my mother is, she's a fighter. Mm. That is a love language to fight. Well, South Africans in general are mm-hmm. fighters. I think mm-hmm. they really, really yep. are. And we grew, up, we grew up with a lot of suffering, I think, in, in our lives in South Africa. Yes. I think life is easy for a lot of South majority of South Africans grow up with not very easy lifestyles. Mm-hmm. And so that hope that you hold on to for something greater mm-hmm. is often feels like it's unachievable because you don't see it very often. You are now a living example of that. Yes. Do you carry that burden? <sighs> I did, but not now. Because I understand that the mortal plane. The physical plane does not exist. All that matters, all that's really important is what lives in my heart, what I carry in my spirit. And that is the truth of who I am. Yeah. What I see on the outside, what I'm surrounded by. It's an illusion, as one of my favorite spiritual teachers would say, Marion Williamson. Yeah. The mortal plane is an illusion. What is it? The truth about you is what lives inside yeah, of you. That's the and that is how yeah. I operate. That, I operate from a place of fullness because mm. I believe that I am God's child. And I'm here to inherit his kingdom. Mm. That's amazing. Yeah. So you're the head intern at UNASA. Yes, I am. And uh, tell us what your position entails. I'm the head intern for PR at UNASA National. We are an international affiliate to the United Nations in New York. So we are the South African arm of the United Nations. Uh, We work with the Sustainable Development Goals of the United Nations. However, we tailor them to fit specifically into, into, into South African society. And so what I do as the head intern for PR is that I create and maintain the presence of UNESA within South African society, more especially in the place, in the space of um, international diplomacy and also social development. Mm -hmm. My work has a lot to do with briefing the media about um, our our development programs. Mm -hmm. Uh, It also entails writing up press releases, Mm -hmm. such as the Youth Day one that I'm releasing tomorrow, you know. And my work is to drive the narrative, mm. to drive the narrative of South Africa within the space of the UN. Yeah. To create yeah. a presence so, of South Africa within the space yeah. of international diplomacy. It's a very, that is my work. It's a powerful position to hold because I guess you're mm-hmm. carrying a lot of, you, know, you, you hold the, uh, you harness mm-hmm. the, the message of South Africa Definitely. into such an international mm-hmm. platform. But I'm dying to know, Youth Day is coming up tomorrow, obviously, and you as a young person need to share a message to those young people. One of my biggest fears of young people who grew up in suffering is their fear of relapsing into that. Like they might lose this all and, and kind of fall back into that space. What is your message to young people who have fear? Oh, I love that. 
I love that because most of what the life that I live now or the accolades that I've acquired, I my greatness only materialized when I decided to step outside the perimeters of fear. What I want to say to the youth of South Africa today, what I want to say to the young women and the young men of South Africa is that your wildest dreams, your biggest dreams are on the other side of fear. Mm-hmm. Your purpose, your greatness will only come into materialization. They will only be in fulfillment when you decide to step out of the familiar life that you know mm. and stepping into the unfamiliar mm. but promised life. Mm. Yes, yeah. sure. that is what I want to say. That beautiful, Dawn. Thank, yeah. thank you. Thank mm. you. That's beautiful. I mean, we're take, taking what you've just said mm-hmm. and about the talk about self-love mm-hmm. and just reali- having that epiphany mm. about your greatness, how do young people meet that challenge mm. with the, the spatial, social, and yeah. economic segregation and, and fact, that they faced with in a place mm. like Cape Town yeah. where you grew up. Could, could, could I make a suggestion to you? In fact, is the, uh, there's a really cool write-up there. I'd like you to write that onto our social site if you can. <laughs> okay. So we can get South Africa to read it because it's yeah. such a pertinent answer to be able to give South uh-huh. Africa. So Absolutely. if you can guys go check out our Facebook page, I'll try and see if she can post a comment on one of our posts on that site. Just with a general thoughts about that because it's such a big conversation yes. that I'd love for you to join. It would almost be remiss for us to just leave it on the couch today. After the break, it's time for an online express where we look at the biggest trends on social media this week. Plus, we've got conscious chef Storm Roger uh, joining us in the kitchen to make chocolate fudge ice cream sandwiches that are entirely vegan and uh, some amazing other things as well. You have to see what it's all about and see it to believe it.
Good afternoon. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. It's good to have you with us on this Friday afternoon. I'm glad that you guys are joining us on the start of your weekend. Don't forget to keep using the hashtag Afternoon Express as we enter Online Express. Yeah, where we chat a bit about what's been happening on the internet, who's saying what and mm. what are they doing and mm-hmm. what's everybody else saying about exactly. it. I've heard of this word steading before and it's been <laughs> something that's kind of popped up many times in my childhood and I'm dying to know exactly what exactly steadings are. A steading is like a... A person who's starring mm. in a movie, okay. who's starring in a situation, or just okay. starring in life. So we've started this thing then on our show <laughs> called the Afternoon Express Steading, which is somebody who we get to celebrate on the show. Um, and I think that's a really powerful tool to be able to have on Afternoon Express. Yeah. So social media is always buzzing with our faves doing the most every week. And we love sharing these moments with you. And we uh, we enjoy it so much, we've decided to put a name to it. And every Friday, we will shout out the Afternoon Express starings of the week, a.k.a. the hustlers, the divas, the big movers, and Kalagatas making moves. Indeed. So as you guys were saying before, I rudely interrupted you earlier on about trying to find out about starings. This week's Afternoon Express starings uh, are the 21,273 people who competed in the Comrades Marathon last Sunday. They deserve the biggest mm-hmm. like round of applause because Absolutely. two South Africans, Anne Ashworth and uh, Bonga Musa Mtembu, won the women and the men's race respectively. And some obviously recognizable faces as well were spotted in the crowd. Yeah. Um, we're super proud of author and radio personality, Reedy Clabby, who finished the race in a Woo-hoo! time of 11 hours, 45 minutes and 11 seconds. Oh, wow. it was How insane. incredible is that? Yeah, and Gail Mabalane, who visited us in the loft just recently, was on the stand supporting her uh, her Bhutan Cabello mm-hmm. as well. Check that out. <laughs> and we cannot get over this cute video that Basi uh, Kumalo shared on her Instagram of her supporting her hubby Romeo. Indeed. <laughs> Oh, that's so cute. Oh, man. Can we just please take a moment to appreciate this guy who took a break during the marathon as well to do Ivo show. This guy made me laugh. Take a look. Can you, can you Ivo show? Of course I can. In heels? Of course, darling. Wow. No, definitely not. <laughs> She's like, oh, it's not that time. We're it's not, not in that, that box. No, no, no. That no, no, no. But uh, that guy's Vosho was a bit too polished. It went to private school. Anyway, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, man, I can't even do the Vosho, so don't even ask me <laughs> what I think about that because damn, that guy killed it, in my mm-hmm. opinion. In my opinion. These afternoon settings are the perfect precursor to our first story today. Take a look. I used to stay with this bridge, maybe six years I sleep here under this bridge. Here is the water bed, here is the electric blanket. Homeless, addicted to drugs, uh, as well as suffering from bone marrow cancer. And with one leg amputated is how 32-year-old uh, Holani Luvunu spent six years of his life while sleeping under a bridge on Nelson Mandela Drive in Chwane. For a couple of months, Tolani was begging at a traffic light and he was spotted by a businessman named Hein Fenter uh, who would occasionally give him some coins every so often. One day, however, Hein stopped and actually talked to Tolani uh, to hear his story and was so moved that he decided to take him on as his very own son and help rehabilitate him as well. So Hein and Tolani uh, le- gave him a prosthetic leg and uh, as well as a new, new lease on life, which was drug-free, which is a hard habit to break, right? Mm. Yeah, it's amazing. Is that something also- up in the UN? Like, drug addiction in South Africa? Uh, it kind of does, especially mm. sexual harassment, mm. you know, and it is something that we are working on because, yeah. I mean, as the UN, we cannot be having such atrocious yes. actions happening. We are an That's international, right, yeah. you know, we are an international mm. company, so. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Also, what what really striking me about the story is that so many times we drive past or walk past people in need, and we we just like overwhelmed by their situation. Mm-hmm. We feel like, what's this little thing that I can do going to do to change their lives? And most mm-hmm. of the time, it's not sustainable. But the fact that Hein invested in it so yeah. much, mm-hmm. and the journey wasn't easy, and struggling with being clean from drugs, Golani began drinking heavily at some point, and Hein had to resort to tough love. But it was all worth it as can be seen by this video that has been circulating on social media. Oh, man. 
Not only finished the Comrades Marathon on his crutches with Hein yeah. by his side. And what an incredible way to end a difficult, difficult race. Yeah. yeah, and we couldn't wrap up the Online Express today without mentioning the very heated black tax debate that has been ongoing Ooh. on Twitter this week. Man, oh man. Black tax has been defined as the financial responsibility black professionals have towards helping their family members, especially their parents, who are less well off. Yeah, and I'm not I'm not for labeling why it is specifically black tax, mm -hmm. but I mean I think we're seeing black tax become an issue of not just uh, fi finances, it's becoming a social issue, it's becoming a a sense career of feeling issue. like mm -hmm. a career issue, feeling like whatever you choose or whatever you try to become, you have you're carrying the dreams mm -hmm. of the past generation and their missed opportunities with you. It's like mm -hmm. yeah. Your thoughts? Well, I do believe that the conversation was sparked by a comment that was made. And what I really want to say on that is you cannot speak about an experience that you haven't lived. Mm -hmm. And so I believe it was really inappropriate for that comment to be made on social media mm -hmm. because you do not know the lives yeah. of black people. Mm -hmm. And so you cannot say anything about it. Yeah, yeah. I agree with both of you. Honestly, I really do. Issue. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, there's a tweet that we came across and basically what Mangoba was saying is that black tax is a result of 300 plus years of systematic uh, exclusion of people of color from oh. the economic system, which they were used to build, which they were used to build it, uh, but not to defeat, to benefit from it as well. Yeah. Um, so if you guys read what's on screen at the moment, you'll get a clearer picture of what he was saying. Yeah. So Mangoba is spot on. People of color wouldn't need as much assistance financially or otherwise had oppressive regimes not yeah. looted them of their land and so much more Indeed. and so on. Yeah, it's been a very interesting seeing people stand from this particular convo. Uh, Candid uh, tweeted, well, Candith tweeted, black tax is a financial burden and keeps us from progressing as we still have to fix certain things. And mm -hmm. next thing you know, we're 40 with no house and, and you built one for your grandparents and you live on overdrafts in fear of what people back home will say if you don't assist relatives in need. <sighs> Just yeah. imagine a society. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> the Avant syndrome is mm -hmm. so real. And that expectation of assistance from a more well or family member is what is taxing. Individuals should be able to offer assistance on their own accord, not from societal pressures, and also be able to manage people's mm. expectations around how you can help them and how you're able to. Yeah, totally. I think there was a tweet that came out from Shunani who probably would agree with you on that one, Bon. He tweeted, Black tax is not a burden for me. That's taking care of family. Wow. So mm. is black tax a burden or not? Should we move away from the term as a whole? Let us know your thoughts on social media. So from talking about what's trending on social media to one of my other trending topics in my life, it is food on Afternoon Express. It might be the middle of winter, but that's not stopping us from finding an excuse to enjoy some ice cream. Today we're making decadent chocolate fudge ice cream sandwiches. And what makes this recipe truly more remarkable is that it's entirely vegan. So we've got founder of The Conscious Cooking, uh, Storm Roger, with us to show us exactly how it's done. Welcome to Afternoon Express. Thank you. So happy to be here. Very, very First exciting. time cooking on television? First time ever cooking on te nice. television, sorry. No pressure, me, guys. Be TV, easy on her, please. My TV easy. legs, my TV legs. But cool. yeah, this is a really exciting little cool cookie ice cream sandwich. As, as you said, vegan, but it's also grain-free. Nice. So gluten-free. And if you wanted to, you could also make it sugar-free. Okay, but is there anything that it's, so it's, it's the freest thing I've ever seen It's not in free of flavor, though. It's not free of flavor. Uh -huh, it's got cool. a vibe. So I wanted to kind of show that you can sure. really like, take those things out but have like a really delicious experience. Let's do it. So should we get in? Yes. All right. Okay, so first we're going to do our dry goods. Mm -hmm. So I've got almond flour in here. I've got some um, coconut sugar, which is just a natural sweetener. Yep. I've got crushed cashews. I've got some dark chocolate, and I've got a little bit of baking powder. Does dark chocolate count as anything above seventy percent? So I would prefer, yeah, above seventy percent because that's usually the vegan one. Anything Love below it. that is usually not vegan. Right. So we're just going to go like we're going to mix these guys up, get them all like friendly, combined. Sure. Nice, nice, nice. The first step is easy, South Africa. The first step is yep. easy. Yeah, this is a super easy <laughs> recipe. So. Cool. Next step, I'm actually going to maybe give to you to do, which sure. is I'm using something called aquafaba, which is we're not going to use that. Oh, so that's not this it. This is just a demonstration. So aquafaba is the the liquid from a tin of chickpeas, mm. and it's only specific to a tin of chickpeas. You can't I use see. anything else. Okay. So what I've done is I've whisked this guy up um, for about two or three minutes. And aquafaba is basically an egg white replacement when you're doing vegan food. Oh, I see. So, you'll so it get comes up fluffy like that. Exactly. So it'll give the structure to the recipe. So nice. this is like a nice little fluffy aquafaba whipped up. Let's pour that in. So you want to just add in for me, if you don't mind, um, some some uh, melted, melted dark exactly, chocolate. Exactly. Some coconuts. Ooh. 
Well, obviously the pleasures of television is we can show you how it gets done in towards the end. So okay. ultimately at the end of the day, you're going to mix up all your wet ingredients together. Yes. You're going to combine it with your dry ingredients. If you want to get a spoon, you can actually just mix that right up. Why not? We've got an option over there, which is already done, girl. All right. So I just realized that I forgot these guys in there. So that's okay. going to be part of your dry. Some Alrighty. dates, cocoa. So basically toss all of those things together, mix exactly. up your dry and your wet ingredients. Yes. It comes out looking like this. And this then is after it's been rested for a little bit. So 30 minutes in the fridge, it should be like a nice fudgy consistency. Nice. So you're going to take this guy once it's been resting and you're going to spoon it and you're going to get a nice greased tray uh, with a little bit of paper and maybe some greasing on top. Okay, there and we go. Quite rustic. And you just sort of Sorry. pump this guy in the oven for about 14 to 16 minutes. And you've got biscuits ready for your delicious uh, cakes you're going to be putting together. So if you guys are big fans of ice cream and you want to be able to make those sandwiches as well, this is a great vegan yes. alternative as well. It's also yes. gluten-free. So thanks so much for helping us with this. Yes. If you want the keyword to get it onto your recipe, you SMS the keyword EAT to 33650 at a cost of 1 Rand 50. It'll get sent straight to your mobile device. Make sure you do those. We've still got one more live performance coming up on the show today by talented local music group BCUC. So stay right where you are. Well, welcome back to Afternoon Express. It's a Friday BCUC. Join us on Afternoon Express with an exclusive performance. Get out your phones, get on Twitter, hashtag Afternoon Express. <laughs> Thank you. 
Good production.